it's Pat from Pat's Ever Music and it's another Pat Answers. Now we've got a lot of amazing questions, they're all time linked in the description. If you've got anything more that you want to talk about in regards to music, in regards to music technology, bands, uh, different techniques, things that you're struggling with guitar, be brave and I promise that if you comment it, there'll be hundreds of other people thinking it. So it's great if I go through these, uh, your comments, because they help so many different people. So diving right on in, let's check out the first question. So question number one comes from Johnny Cooper uh, from Facebook and from YouTube. So your videos have helped me so much. Thanks for your hard work and great videos, but mostly I struggle with short fingers. Something, uh, I also have two pins in my left wrist, so it can be very difficult to play, but I really don't want to give up. I love music, so I'm hoping you may know some tricks or have some advice for guys with injuries and or short fingers. Johnny, thank you for your comment. Fantastic question. Now I get a lot of sort of comments from all around the world with people who have had uh, wrist injuries, arm injuries, back injuries, and they're wanting to know which light guitars do I suggest, all of that different stuff. I say to everybody, I say exactly the same thing. Number one, perhaps you should see a physiotherapist to double check that A, um, playing the guitar isn't going to be detrimental to your health. I think anybody can play a guitar regardless of, of different sort of physical things that have happened to you or regardless of your struggles. I think anybody can play, but due to maybe some injuries, maybe you can't play um, uh, the way that a lot of other people might play. For example, um, you know, the guitarist from that massive band, uh, Deep Purple, right? Um, Tommy, Tony, Iomi, so he had an injury where the tips of his fingers were cut off. And so, you know, he was thinking, well, I can't play guitar anymore. So what he did was have to make silicon uh, or out of plastic sort of fingertips to put onto his regular fingers because they were cut so short to allow him to play. And he plays with very, very light gauge strings just because of that uh, sort of arrangement going on. So just because you've, you've, you've been injured, you still be able to play the guitar, but you might be, have to play it a different way. So I would certainly consult um, a physiotherapist, but regardless of that, if you do have short or thick fingers and you're struggling to play all the strings cleanly, what I would do is I would actually break it down. I wouldn't buy a particular type of guitar. I wouldn't buy you know, some sort of plastic that goes on your fingers that you may have seen advertised on Facebook. I wouldn't do any of that jazz. What I would do is I would slow things right, right down. So let's take a uh, A chord, for example. So A chord, the frets would be played like this. So what I would actually do is instead of perhaps, some people like to play it just with one finger. Instead of doing that, and instead of using your first finger, second finger, third finger, because they're, sometimes the thickest of your fingers, I would take off that first finger, jump your second finger and third finger up and use your pinky. So using your second finger, third finger and pinky. So just using some different fingers might really help you ring out those strings. Now what I would do is before I would say this chord is learnt, you've learnt this chord, move on to the next one. Make sure that each string that with that A chord you can hear five strings ringing out really, really cleanly. Now, if it's still a little bit tricky and you can't get that sound nice and cleanly and you're working it out, you're looking at your fingers and you're seeing, okay, well look, my fingers are sort of leaning here and there. What I would actually do is maybe try and play the chord another way. So the best thing about the guitar is the same notes are everywhere. All of these notes you can find all over the guitar. So an A note up here, fifth fret on the sixth string, you know, there's also an A note, the open fifth string. Right? It's an A note. So maybe try and play different chords. So instead of this A, try and play an A bar chord. Which one do you like the sound of? Simply trying to play different chords might really help you get over that hurdle. Stick to it, great question, next one. Second question, Pat, how did you study music? I mean, did you study in music school, music college, or were you self-taught? I was curious and I wanted to study music. Thank you for your comment. Now, although I did go to a music high school, I didn't actually get into music until my very last year. So six months before I finished high school, I got into playing guitar and I just loved it. I was obsessed with bands like Metallica, uh, Joe Satriani, Silverchair, all those different bands. And all I wanted to do was play and it was just nothing but fun. And then when it came to finishing high school, and choosing a university degree or choosing a diploma or working out where is my life gonna go next, I just, all I wanted to do was music. And so then I did a certificate three, so that's a year course in music, and that's if very, very boundary, like starting position. So you're only just learning guitar, that's a certificate three. Then I did a certificate four in music. And then although I loved music so much, there were so many musicians that were so much better than myself, and I just thought, 
How am I gonna make it in this industry if I just can't play, if I'm no good? And I didn't understand theory. None of it made sense, everything seemed confusing, and I just gave up. And I, and I regret it so much. I gave up during my certificate four, and I went over and I started studying music production instead, so mixing and engineering music. And I did that for a year, and then, although I loved learning about the sort of recording side of things, I just hated the fact that I was on the other side of the studio. So instead of being in the studio room where you're recording, I was behind the glass on the computers. And I just hated spending so many hours on the computers. I was really selfish. I didn't want to work on other people's music. I wanted to work on myself. So then I went back and then I studied an advanced diploma of music, uh, sort of music and music theory. And suddenly everything made sense. During that time, when I went back to music, that's when I started this YouTube channel, because all the theory made sense. I could suddenly read the, the, the neck, I knew where all the notes were, I started to understand how to create chords, how to write songs, how to solo, all of that stuff. And then after my advanced diploma, I finished a degree, and then I did a master's. Now my master's is in teaching, but because I already have a degree in music, you know, you just put the two together. Uh, and so that's basically, you know, my, the history of my studying. It's a lot of study, I know, but I could never really decide where I wanted to go. I just knew that music was my passion and I loved music so much. Do I suggest everybody study music? Yes, if that's something that you're passionate about. There's so many amazing online courses. You can study at Berkeley and do an online course, and Berkeley's one of the best music schools in the world. You can even, if you don't want to spend any money, you just want to chip away, in the first, in the description below, there's two different playlists. Do you want to learn theory? Do you want to learn practical sort of playing? They're all, the videos are in order, so go back and check them, and it's free. Hundreds of videos in order. You don't have to go to a website, you don't have to subscribe to something, you don't have to sign up, you don't have to pay anything. It's all for free. So if you want to study music, don't think that you have to go to a school. There's so many options online these days. Next question. Hey Pat, awesome video. I want to know your opinion on amp sims or amp simulators. As a bedroom guitarist who doesn't gig, I think it's convenient, especially for a guitarist like myself, who, who get motivated late in the evenings or early in the morning. What tips do you have for practicing without waking the whole house? Thank you. Fantastic question. So my entire album that's uh, being mixed this month, which is really exciting, so I would imagine would be out in the next two months. Just have to think of uh, song titles, album art, all that different stuff, how I'm gonna release it. So next two months, I would say. But that entire album was recorded direct into the computer. So I recorded straight into the 11 rack, which is the orange box behind me, hopefully you can see. Instead of using this massive 50 watt um, head sort of, you know, Marshall style sort of amp. That would definitely wake the entire house. The reason why I recorded straight into the computer, so without an amp, is you've got it there. You can record with headphones, so it's not making any noise. I can record really late at night, really early in the morning. And then the best thing is, if you've recorded direct into the computer, you can do whatever you want. You can later, once you've written the song and you've made that, you know, take, and it sounds great, what you can do is you can then send it out of your computer into a real amp and you can mic the real amp, or you could take it over to a studio and you could use their amps. You can mic it up any different way you want. So rather than, the thing is if you record a real amp, okay, you've captured it once and you've got that one sound, but that's it. You can't sort of go back and, and amp it up again. You've already sort of done that, it's saved. But if you use a DI, if you just straight into the computer, you can have so many different options. In terms of amp sims, I have just used the standalone BIOS software. I think it's amazing. You can get it for your iPhone or for your iPad, and then you can get a connection to plug your guitar, uh, and you can record that way. I really wanna do a video on that, so I might see if I can work with them. Uh, I have used BIOS um, to record my ideas, and then I'll reamp later. Now with BIOS, you, you may, so think of it as like an amp simulator, and you can change all the different styles of amps, different cabinets, where you're miking it up, what tubes or valves are in the amps, it's amazing. There's so much you can do just with that one program, and I think it's like a hundred bucks, which is pretty good, considering how many amps you get. Um, other than that, what I use is the Fractal AX8, which is just on the desk just there. It looks like this. Now that has hundreds of amps and cabs, and the cool thing is, you can, a studio in England or, you know, from across the world, they can spend all this time recording a, a cabinet that was used on a particular Guns N' Roses record, and you can buy that, and then you can use that cabinet yourself. It is absolutely amazing. And have a bit of a listen. It's what I use for all my videos. And I, I think it sounds really, really lovely.
So it's got all of these built-in amps, built-in effects. I think it's amazing. My favorite bands like um, Periphery and Metallica and you know the instrumental artists like uh, Nick Johnston, Polini, all these guys are starting to use the fractal units because they sound so good and it's so much easier touring with something that can fit in your overhead storage compartment when you're flying rather than touring with a massive you know, white amp and, and rig like that or needing multiple amps, just a tiny unit. The sounds are so good and believe me, most people can't tell the difference. And when it's in a mix, when it's with bass, when it's with vocals, when it's with a drum kit, you really can't tell the difference. And the, you, know, you can either spend the same amount of money on one amp and get one sound, or spend that money and get hundreds of amps and hundreds of pedals and everything involved. And it's, it's amazing. There's gonna be a full review uh, on the AX8, the Fractal Audio AX8, which is that thing behind me that I use for all my guitar tones, but highly recommend Amp Sims, man. You, you can't go wrong. Definitely dive in, and, and if you've got an iPhone, see if you can buy the connection, you can buy the, the cheap app. Or if you've got a full desktop rig and you've got a way of plugging your guitar into your computer, uh, buy us even make products for that. But yes, Amp Sims, go for it. Highly recommend. Next comment comes from Darren. Your accent is becoming more American with every vid. 100% agree. So I don't know where my accent comes from. Uh, if so many people over the years watch my videos and just assume that I'm British uh, or American, Nope, just Australian. I just have a weird accent. I don't have that like really thick Aussie twang. Um, you know, I still may use words like g'day, uh, I don't know, throw shrimp on the barbie, whatever, you know, that sort of stuff. But I have definitely have a different accent. Don't know where it comes from, 100% Australian. So, weird one. Thank you. Next question from Daniel, I'm a beginner at playing guitar. I want to play metal songs, but I don't want to go through the long process of l the guitar basics. I'm impatient and confused about guitars in general. I don't know where to start. Now, Daniel, great question. When you start sort of anything, whether it's music, whether it's, uh, you know, like a new skill, like driving a car or riding a bike or fitness or anything, you get really, really excited when you start because you think, okay, I'm going to be like a rock star. Or I'm going to be like the best bodybuilder in the world, whatever it is. Sadly, these things just really take time. And what I would really do is focus on just having uh, goals. So having a goal by the end of the day. So you wanna practice this and you wanna get faster or you wanna play this riff by the end of the day, great. All right, what's your goal for the rest of the week? Do you wanna play three songs this week? Do you wanna write your own song? What's your goal for the month? What's your goal for the year? What's your actual goal of playing the instrument? Why do you wanna play? I think the problem in the long run with being impatient when you're learning anything is that if you learn like with guitar, if you learn all these different sort of shapes and stuff, Great, you might be able to shred, but you might, may not understand what notes you're playing and why, and then ultimately your sort of music will suffer for that, I think. And it's, I think it's so much easier just having a little bit of theory, because then you know what you're playing and, and why it works, and it's actually easier, because you can play sort of tastier, sort of soulful solos and licks, rather than just worrying about shredding. And the problem with shredding is after like, you know, after 10 seconds, people are like, oh yeah, cool, okay, what's next? If it's just shredding the entire time, it's like you're having a conversation with someone and someone's speaking really, really fast and they're speaking the entire time, you don't know what they're saying because there's so many words coming out. After a couple of seconds, you're like, okay, this is too much for me. So just think about it like that. So you're talking with someone, you're having a conversation, there's gonna be some pauses and that's okay. And with music, it's the same thing. So sadly, look, it just takes time, I would again, check out those two playlists because at least you've got all those different videos in order. You can go through one after another. But hey, if you're really excited about it, just play. Play for as many hours a day as you can. Like guys like Joe Satriani, um, Kirk Hammett from Metallica and Slash, they all played for like eight to 10 to 12 hours a day. And they're awesome. Now some of those dudes can't read music and that is fine. You don't have to read music. They just have an amazing ear and because they put in 10, 12 hours a day for so many years, they are amazing and they are you know, kings in their particular field. So if you're excited about it, just play. Uh, but I really high re highly recommend learning a little bit of theory. It'll help you so much. Thank you for the question. Ah, next comment was wondering if you had any advice for pinch harmonics. So thank you for being a regular on my channel and for commenting and here is my advice. Step number one, grab yourself an electric guitar. Step number two, lots of distortion. <laughs> That'll really, really help have uh, sort of make the pinch harmonics jump out. Choose your bridge pickup as well, whether it's a humbucker or a single coil, that is fine. So lots of distortion, choose your bridge uh, sort of pickup. Now you can do pinch harmonics on anything. You can do them on a nylon string acoustic guitar, a steel string acoustic guitar, an electric guitar. Whether your electric guitar is plugged in or not, I'm not sure if you can hear this. So they're still jumping out, but obviously you just can't hear them. But you can, you don't have to be plugged in. You can do this technique on anything, it just helps 
uh, them ring out if you've got a lot of distortion and you're on the bridge pickup. So what I would do first is understand that a pinch harmonic, you're pinching the note and you're creating an artificial harmonic. Now there's two sort of types of harmonics, natural harmonics, artificial harmonics. Natural harmonics, let's quickly play them, then I'll show you pinch harmonics. So with the electric guitar, some parts of the guitar ring out a lot more than others in terms of natural harmonics. So what I want you to do is have your finger, first of all, have it on the 12th fret, so you're holding down that string. Next step, lift up that finger so it's just resting really, really lightly above uh, where your finger just was. Now, move it closer to the neck pickup so that it's above that fret. So it's above the fret closest to the uh, neck pickup. So you would say the fret between the 12th and between the 13th. Play that note and then as soon as you pick the note, lift your finger off and you'll be able to hear that natural harmonic ring out. Now that's the same for all of the uh, strings. So between that 12th and 13th fret. Harmonics are really strong on the between the 12th and 13th fret, uh, also between, you could say, the 7th and 8th. So they're natural harmonics. With pinch harmonics, there's a little bit of a skill, there's a bit of a trick to it. Give yourself a little bit of time. It may take you two minutes, it may take five minutes, it may take half an hour or an hour, but once you start getting it, you'll go, oh, okay, I understand. So. To understand the theory, what you're actually doing is when you're holding a pick, hopefully it zooms in right, uh, you've got your sort of thumb and the skin of your thumb and then there's the pick. So what you actually want to do, hopefully this camera angle is a little bit better, what you actually want to do is you want to hit the string and imagine this finger is the string, at the same time that you hit the string with the pick, so I'll exaggerate just so you can see it, the same time you hit the uh, string with the pick you actually want to try and instantly have the string hit that inside bit of your thumb. So you want them to hit at the same time and that creates that pinch and it creates like a fake harmonic. So it would sound like this. So hear how it sort of squealed? This is a normal note. This is a pinch harmonic. So they sound quite different to regular notes. That's the thing here. It's great if you're sort of playing a solo. And then you add a pinch harmonic in there. Every now and again, it sounds great. If, because you're holding the note, you can actually bend it as well. So that sounds really cool to do as well. And it's a bit of a technique, but they really do sort of jump out and just pick a fret and go down all of the strings. You could do that, or you could combine uh, sort of theory and this practice, this technique, and you could play like a C major scale. But try and do a, it's gonna sound terrible, but try and do a pinch harmonic on every note. So that way, you're practicing a scale, you're practicing a new technique, and you're having a bit of fun as well. And so rather than just practice a simple technique, you can combine all of those different skills. So I would practice it two ways. Choose one fret and just go up and down on all of the different strings, or do a scale method. That's it, hopefully you have success. If you do have success, can you let me know? I actually wanna know how you guys are going with this. It's heaps of fun. Next question, thank you for your comment. Now this is a really, really kind comment, so thank you very much, Julian. Just to summarize, uh, you can certainly read it here or you could pause the video, but we're talking really about sort of muting different strings. Now this is a, a really interesting technique, so let's discuss it now. Fantastic comment, Julian. Now when you're playing with a lot of distortion, it's really important to mute. <laughs> I'm sure you've all seen rock stars and metal, you know, metal stars do that, right? It's hit a chord and they're putting in so much of their might and it's just only getting the strings that they want. It's definitely a skill to practice and I would practice this skill with distortion so you can hear what it sounds like when the strings are ringing out that you don't want them to. 
okay? You might make it sound like that, but that's okay. We're gonna to learn together. So what I would do is this is, um, I learned this from a Paul Gilbert instructional video. Check it out, it's on YouTube if you wanna check that out. Uh, is what I would do is I would think about how you're muting the strings. And I'll tell you Joe Satriani's answer for this as well, because that blew my mind. So let's say you're playing like an A chord, right? Big chunky A chord. Now, what you could do is you could use your thumb up here to be sitting on top of the sixth string so you don't hit that thicker string. Now that's one different type of muting technique, but that's gonna be really hard for you to use your thumb all of the time, especially when you're soloing. What I would actually think about doing is try and play the fifth fret on the second string. All right? Pinch harmonics if you can. Now what I would do is I would actually lean my first finger down slightly so that when I hit that fifth fret on the second string, the first string is muted. So you're muting it with this finger. Also, you could mute the other strings from ringing out over here with your palm. So, you're muting it with this hand, you're muting it with this hand. That's what I would think about. Don't think about just one particular technique, just think about a few different things sort of muting as one, as like teamwork. If you're playing a power chord, I would actually use here, your second finger, to lie very sort of gracefully or gently on top of the string above, so you can play hitting pretty hard there. So you can play really hard and not worry about that sort of string above sort of ringing out. Now in terms of the strings below the power chord, same thing. Lie your fingers down a little bit down, a little bit further down than what they would. Cause if you're not, if you don't want to hear those open strings, lie them down so that the open strings sound like this. And that would, be my advice. Now, Joseph Triani is amazing at this because he's played through the 80s, he plays through so many different rigs that he has this amazing technique. Now, I can't do it, but I'll explain it. That as he's sort of playing, he's soloing. When he's not soloing, he would actually roll his volume off so you can't hear anything, so there's no feedback, uh, which is an amazing skill in itself to develop. But when he is playing, as soon as he moves up a string, his fingers, his free fingers, the ones that aren't holding the pick, are actually walking up on the different strings. So if he's playing the first string, for example, and then he moves up to the second string, he has a finger that's resting lightly over here on that first string, so it's not ringing out. And then as he plays up the strings, he would use the other fingers to mute as well and sort of walk them up like a little bit of a dance. Amazing technique, massive fan of Joe Satriani. But that's it for this week. If you have any more questions, anything about music, about theory, anything at all, please leave a comment below and we'll, we'll make this when I feel like we've got enough questions uh, and otherwise I'll, I'll answer you in response. Remember, you can send me a message on Instagram, you can send me a message on Facebook and I can use those comments as well if you have more in-depth answers and you feel like you know three or five words on a YouTube video isn't gonna be a big enough comment. But otherwise, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. If you wanna learn theory, check out this playlist or you want more of a sort of a practical modern approach, head out this playlist. But I've been Pat from Pat Dave Music. Thank you so much for sticking around. I'll see you all again.